Brook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Rather cold outside for this edition of Donnybrook. Perfect weather for the NHL All-Star Game in town this weekend. Let's meet the wintry mix around our big green table, starting with Sarah Fenske from St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio weekdays on KWMU, along with Joe Holloman from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. He's Ray Hartman, one of our founders, of course, with the Riverfront Times and with the Big 550 KTRS. And Mr. Alvin Reed from the St. Louis American. 97.1, the Dave Glover Show, 590 AM and stlmag.com. Ray Hartman, we lost one of the greats in uh, PBS history and broadcast history today when Jim Lehrer died at the age of 85. Of course, he was nine network fans know him well as the co-host of the McNeil Lair News Hour, then the Lair News Hour, and uh, he made it look easy. He was a Mizzou grad and a true pro, was he not? He was all of those things, and, and it really makes us, you know, kind of humbles us that we're part of the PBS family, but he, he was a 50, 1956 Mizzou grad, so no, I did not hang out with him <laughs> there. I know it looks that way, but I did no. not. But he was a 1956 grad of Mizzou and, uh, and really represents kind of the, an era, a bygone era yeah, in sure. journalism. Big loss for journalism and broadcasting. Yeah. Well put. Sarah Fenske, want to ask you about uh, Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner, whose office, if not the Circuit Attorney herself, had a press conference today after she kind of got in trouble when it was discovered that she had complained to Jeff Begays of CBS News that she had been stopped by the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department in a traffic stop in an attempt to intimidate her because she was the first black circuit attorney in the history of St. Louis. She said she was pulled over on Christmas Eve for 15 minutes. Well, Chris Nagus of KMOV looked at the tape and he said, you know what, actually it was six minutes, it was on December 23rd, and her lights were off while she was driving at night. So what happened at the press conference today? Well, so Kim herself um, did not show up at this press conference. Um, she sent one of her deputies out and he explained something that, I will say I have defended Kim in the past, it can sometimes be hard of late to defend Kim on some of these things, but there is one explanation he gave that I think makes some sense. And he said that after this traffic stop that she had been concerned about what happened and that she had reached out to somebody um, apparently within the St. Louis Police Department and said, I was pulled over. It felt like this really um, intimidating kind of stop. It lasted a long time. It felt like it was 30 minutes. And someone within the department um, gave her information and said, oh, no, 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 that was actually closer to 15 minutes. And that's where she came up with this 15-minute number. And I will say, having been pulled over for speeding on occasion or other traffic stuff, when you're there kind of sweating bullets, you're not necessarily watching the clock, it can feel like a lot longer than it was. I don't know that, to me, it's the hugest deal if she got that number wrong. Well, then don't go on national TV without <laughs> saying, you. you know, well, the, the, the police themselves told me I was stopped for 15 minutes. I think it was too long, but my lights were out and all that. But it's the ongoing saga of when the officer stopped you, okay? If you just said, like, hi, you know, why are you stopping me? He's like, you know, ma'am, your lights are, lights are off. off, and, you know, I'm going to run your car or run your, you know, whatever, and do your thing. And all she had to do was bounce, say, like, thank you, officer, and went back to her office and put out a press release that said, like, hey, I just had a wonderful, you know, uh, meeting a police officer doing his job. If police officers do their job like this gentleman did, I wouldn't have a problem with any one of them, and it would be over. So mm -hmm. now it's just some more mess. She's created that she a problem created for, herself. for herself. She has. And I, I, as I, I say, I might be the only one, her. but I think being pulled over for 15 minutes is not that onerous. Oh, but, I was just going to say the idea that you would be pulled over and not get a ticket. You'd figure 15, 20 minutes by the time they run your, mm -hmm. make sure the car's not stolen, make sure you're not wanted, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. That's 15 minutes. But I will say, That's relations between Kim Gardner and the police, both sides will acknowledge this, are very fraught. And so there was probably amped up tension going into this on her side because she sees those police lights. She's assuming there's trouble. And so she comes in 
in a tense state of mind. And I can see how that might color the transaction for her in a way that's not necessarily even fair to the officer. Or, or, or true. Well, or true is what you're saying. Yeah. And the fact is, she was stopped because she didn't have her lights on. And the police officer did his job. And as Alvin said, this isn't anything till she gets on national television and tries to paint it as some part of a conspiracy to persecute her. That's where the problem is. Or oh, either that or Chris Nagus for actually checking what she said to see if it was true and finding out not to and, be. And even if they are, like I say, if they are persecuting her, that's even more reason to respond in a nice way and then follow up and just say like, hey, I had interaction with the police. It went fine. I wish all interactions with police okay. were like that. Uh, Ray? Uh, I think it was an unforced error for her, but, but it's interesting that, that the, the African-American police, it's the Ethical Society of Police, which is largely African-American, which did not endorse her in the last election, has until this point been very supportive of her. And I think a lot of, I happen to think that some of this, the whole trying to criminalize the Greitens case has been unfair. And, it, and I think she hurts her, her case when she does an unforced error like this. But, but in this, this case, they did take her to task. They they kind of mm -hmm. questioned yeah. her on this, too. Alvin Reed, what about Mike Parson, the governor, <laughs> in an election year, saying that he's not going to raise the pay of those who work in the veterans' nursing, run, nursing homes run by the state of Missouri. I think there are seven, and these are the individuals who are making less than $24,000 a year, and they brush the teeth of the veterans. They turn them when they can't turn. They make their beds. They perform the daily duties that the veterans can't do. And the governor is not going to give them a pay raise. Well, you just took about everything I was about to say. <laughs> but real quick, um, you know, we lost the PBS giant uh, in Jim. But Joe can attest, the first television program that ever drew me to Channel 9 was Monty Python's. Flying oh, and, and Terry, Terry Jones, Jones yeah. passed away. Oh. And I just want to say that well for all St. Louis, yeah. that was a loss, too. Right. Or, or, or for those right. of us crazy enough to actually watch the program. Point well made. Yeah. Now, let's get back to this cruel and vicious <laughs> governor. <laughs> all right. You know, if I was going to run for governor, I might hold that till after re-election. And I just think that when we start talking about nickels and dimes and millions of dollars, giving these people a pay raise is not taking a chunk out of the state budget that I think would even be missed. And so I really, I just think this is just a, a, a really, I don't even want to say politically nasty thing to do because I don't think it helps him politically. So just a, just a bad, onerous thing well, to do. Well, all I can say is, is his name pronounced Drebis, Dave Drebis, who mm -hmm. writes for the Business Journal. He, uh, in last week's column, he points out that Jim Moody, who was the budget director for John Ashcroft, comes out with the Moody report. And even though revenues are up 5%, Moody is sending alarms in the state of, sounding alarms in the state of Missouri because last year there was a bunch of money that came in because the, the tax laws in April. He says that's not coming in this year and the governor may not have money to play with that he had last year. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things. Maybe we gave away too many tax credits, Ray. Well, there's that. Uh, there's just welcome to the joy of living in a low revenue state. I mean, both parties, frankly, have been complicit in this for a long time. We're the 40 something state in just about every key service. I mean, whether you talk about education, higher education, corrections, social services, across the board, you know, with very few exceptions. Strangely, though, when the Republicans, in this case, who dominate politics like the Democrats once did, when they have something they really need money for, they get it. Well, it's some, amazing some me, when they have a priority they need, funded. but this is clearly yeah, not one too. of them. Right. I would think this is a good uh, running uh, okay. good yeah, talk valet, show. Wait, it's good for Nicole parking. Galloway. They I mean, got the money for valet parking. That's $50,000. Yeah, right. that, that's the point. I mean, they, when they want it, they got it's a, it. it. It's a parking it's, attendant. It's, it's a not good, valet parking. It's a good talking point for Nicole Galloway. Joe, Talby Roach, who heads up by state, and that's the organization that oversees Metro, is urging his board of directors, the commission, to kind of adopt a child. The child would be the loop trolley, which was closed on December 29th because nobody's riding it. It's not making any money. So Roach would like to have kind of like a city pass. You ride the trolley and you'll get a free pass to the zoo. <laughs> I guess that's already free. Uh, or he, they're going to force the loop, tr uh, loop employees to ride it. Also, it's been pointed out by Elliot Davis of Channel 2 that Talby Roach sits on the 501c3 that would benefit from all this because he's on the 
Loop Trolley TDD, Transportation Development District, which is on the hook for right. this white elephant at this point. Right. So does Talby Roach have a conflict of interest? Uh, you know, he says his attorney says it's not. And I don't think it's something that we're looking at of like what nefarious actions are going on here. But it's very simple problem to solve. Resign from the TDD board. But he hasn't done that. And you show, I didn't say he had. I'm saying it's an easy problem to solve. So you think it's a problem? All he has to do is resolve. It is a far less problem than anything we've talked about so far <laughs> at this table. Uh, but yeah, sure, it's a problem. Um, yeah, but I think he could uh, get away with it. You know, the, the, the trolley is one of those things, and it's not just him, it's not just St. Louis. At what point do you just cut your losses and walk away? I'm glad that they're not taking it under their umbrella and they're just going to operate it for a four-year period to see how it works. There's questions of, will it hurt us for future federal money? So, mm. I, I mean, do I see it as being a problem? Sure. Do I think we got to say what kind of uh, dastardly deed is going on? Certainly not yet, as long as we don't have to pay another dime. Oh, yeah, that'll for work. For the trial. That'll always happen. I'm fine well, with No, it. no, it actually should. And and I agree with Joe. I hate to do that to you. But, but the... <laughs> the the, uh, uh, this conflict, I mean, it's a 501c3. It's not like some private vendor or something. It, it's, who cares? The thing about it is, and, and I think good for Talby Roach that he's trying to step up and do something. Here's the deal. The TDD is what it, that, that's what people pay in sales taxes when they go to the loop. When you go to the pageant, when you go to Blueberry Hill or you know, pick the bar or restaurant, you, the, the, or the retailers, they collect a sales tax that goes to the TDD. That's they get something like nine hundred grand that they're going to take one way. They're going to get for thirty years or whatever it is, and oh that, gosh, that no intense. for the trolley. That's and, insane. No, no, but that's what they. But I'm talking about the fact that it's, it's a it, waste of dough. It Ray, does, it's, I drove down to Bolivar two days Charlie, ago. There is nothing interesting. Charlie or charming about the street. Charlie. Nobody wants to ride the trolley. Charlie. You can throw $900,000, which otherwise could go to the homeless, or it could go to mental okay. health, or it could go to any number of things. It's a waste Except of dough. Except the TDD was legally structured to collect money for this. But okay? here's, here's no, the thing, and, and even, me, even by Talby's own calculation, right. they need money on top well, of that. No, and that, this and is he, where I disagree with Talby. Yeah. My feeling is, this is, you could talk about, you could take everything in the world and give it to something else. This was earmarked for that. The problem is, and they ought to, listen, they ought to take that 900 grand and not one cent more for any purpose from anyone if you can't operate a blanking trolley for 900 grand, then something's wrong with you. I mean, what, do you, what does it take? What are the operational costs? Do we need a well, staff of 20 so, people? I don't know. I can't well, imagine you know. how, can you how you can it? even, I can't even imagine how you can spend 900 grand on well, a trolley. Well, by their own it's calculations, crazy. I mean, by state is saying they're going to pull out of these existing pots that include some federal money, but this is money where if they didn't have to spend it to operate this trolley, it would go to things like maintaining bus engines. It's like we need to maintain our bus no, engines. I, agree I understand I, it's a small drop in the bucket, no. but it's like, it's not like that bus system is just swimming in money and able to provide service to everybody who needs it. It's All right. not. Ray, speaking okay. of money, how about Prop P money? You know, in two, right. uh, April 2017, voters in St. Louis County overwhelmingly increased their sales taxes in order to fund public safety and police, right. meaning two-man patrol cars along with body cameras and pay increases for police. Right. Right. Now it's being pointed out after some of the money's gone to nurses at the jail, prosecuting secretaries, that the budget is running dry and they don't have the money. Well, first, let's get this out of the way. I was misquoted as saying that I was okay with nurses at the jail getting the money. I was, I was misquoted by myself, but but I, I it's called walking back because I may a culpa. Okay, here's because the they've done such a good job as well, we all know. The, the big jail. the big question. <laughs> there's one real simple question. What happened to all this money? Right. And Jake Zimmerman, who's running against Sam Page, has a very good idea, which I think is the second thing they ought to do, which is to audit the the money. That's the second thing they ought to do. The first thing they ought to do is get rid of the county auditor, Mark Tucker, who has been, your paper did a story in 2018 that he had been there a year and had never done an audit. Right. 
He's his main. He How has. Many he doesn't. Now? I think he. I, look, I try to figure from the website. I try to reach out to him. He might have done four in the last three years, and I and nobody even's heard of him. I mean, like when Nicole Galway does an audit, she kind of informs us of it, you know. And so <laughs> they, they. He's a. And this is where I am with the Republicans. People always say because there were three Republicans: Tim Fitch and and Mark Harder, Ernie Trakis, and, and Ernie Trakis are the ones so far that are saying this and. Sam Page, bless his heart, it's, it's, he said last May when he took over for Stanger, he acknowledged that because the county auditor had been a decades-long friend of his, that perhaps he shouldn't be there. He's still there. Yeah. Okay, you know, and okay. my point is that's okay, we, the problem, is finding okay, we, out what happened to the money. Uh, well, Ray, uh, Alvin, you were for giving the money to the nurses, weren't you? Yeah, I was. And I still am, like I say. Now, where the money goes and how it gets there, oh, you're, you're going to find out it doesn't have anything to do with nurses and you're probably gonna find out it doesn't have anything to do with Sam Page. This goes right back to well, meanwhile in South Dakota. I no, no, it isn't. You. No, it isn't. Right. I don't <laughs> think so. I Let think it's kind of favor Ray, and I'll agree right, with right, you right. on this issue. Yeah. Is, is that, Get out of here. This is well, ruining it, our brand. Man bites dog. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, when did it become terrible to find out where the money's getting spent? You know, it would, I mean, going back to the Parsons thing, not that I want to see veterans, nurses not get paid, but what he's saying is, is I don't know if we're going to have the money, and all of a sudden that's a terrible thing for a politician to say. And all Fitch is saying is, where did this money go? And what I thought was very interesting is they talk about, well, and they, they cited some things, and we say, well, I get along, I, I would go along with that, body cameras. Uh, computers and, and devices that show where gunfire is. Okay, that's good, that's good. And new positions in the police department. I want to know what that is, that's all. Maybe there's a very good reason why they don't have any money left. Show us. Well, that's and, all, and that's and all I we're saying. I show us. I agree 100%, but one thing that slows it down is right now, okay, that questioning the police department is not in. Okay, and I'm not saying like where you're coming from. Clearly on, you don't live on, in the city of St. Louis. No, no. What I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, not, it's not grand. Out and out <laughs> violence and, and all that, or what's going on with Kim Gard. I'm just saying, philosophically, right now, okay, if the police had added some positions or something like that, you said like it was okay and they should have came clean, but is it, is it okay to spend this money on this department in this police station? I guarantee you, overwhelming majority of people who voted for Prop P would say that's fine. Well, so, I disagree with you. Okay. I disagree with you. Uh, I think it would be a 50 50 split. Oh, uh, Alvin does yeah. speak the wait, truth. Wait. When, when the police officers in the county got their raise, the only one who objected was Tom Sullivan, the self appointed watchdog. And it you was, know, the only, sorry, reason people, point, the only reason people back wait. taxes for police is because they always think it's going to officers on the street. No, 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 that's actually not true. Joe. Yeah, they, no, the Joe, people, I mean, who, go, tell you, I the people at, who go right, to I, the ballot, okay. when they say, why right. do they bill it as we're giving this for police officers? Okay. They don't say we need a bunch of new administrators in our department. Here's what they they say. tell you about safety, and okay. that's why people why vote I on it. I changed my mind, and I was I had Tim Fitch on the show. What, getting ready for him, I looked up what was said about Prop P on the thing. And the interesting thing about it is there was something for everybody within police. So for those that want to reform, there was, among things, uh, training for conflict resolution, more money for that. There was more money for dashboard camps. There was more money for body camps. Those are things that reformers want. Mm -hmm. There was also more police positions and raises. It was all laid out, but it was so clear to me after he made the point, and I realized I was wrong, that it was all they were talking about. They had seven different things, and they said, if you vote, which I did for Proposition P, these are the things we're going to do. And they didn't say anything about giving money to parks or giving it to the corrections, okay. which, by the way, well, I do think that the people in the prison should get more money, but this was not what it was for. Okay, it was right. so I think clear. You're, I, okay, we, we got to move on, but, Ray, speaking of money, I, that's the whole show tonight has been about your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elliot would be proud. <laughs> um, you paid for it. Ray, the MLN, MLS, Major right. League Soccer ownership team, announced this week that even though it is not going to get the $30 million in state tax credits that right. it wanted, Governor Parson put the kibosh on right. that, it's still going to go forward. What yeah. did you think about that? Well, I think it proves a principle. They did not need the money. Now, they could make an argument privately that there was some bad faith involved, that they were misled. That's that's a kind of inside baseball thing. But the fact of the general public principle is there's a thing called but for. But for the money, this project wouldn't happen. Those are the projects that should get money. In other words, but for this tax credit, 
this developer can't build in such and such sure. a neighborhood. That's what the money should be for. It's not because, gee, this is great for St. Louis. How about a little $30 million Zero. in the state? Well, I, I mean, I agree with Ray in principle, but what's at issue now is the city of St. Louis is looking at these LCRA tax abatements on this soccer stadium. And I got to say, the way things have gone in St. Louis, where we're giving a tax abatement to every single person who rehabs a small house to make it a bigger house, and we're giving them tax abatements, it's really hard to argue that this wonderful civic project that this family is paying for out of their own pockets shouldn't also get a tax abatement in St. Louis. Everybody gets a tax abatement, and that's a problem. But it's like, how can we say no to this when we don't say no to this, you know, fancy new house going in on the hill? Well, and I think the reason why it looks as if uh, the state hoodwink them is because we have gotten, like Sarah said, so used to everybody gets one. And it's right. like, how dare you? I don't get one too. I mean, you know, that I've been allowed. How come me? You know, uh, I think if people want to build businesses and, and do things like expand their home, Boy, if they can afford it, I say more power to I you. I will say but this, But when though, you give tax credits, where do you draw the I line? You, you know, know where you draw the line? You don't give it to a dog park. And in South St. Louis, they just <laughs> gave one to a... They had to subsidize a bar. It's called K-Bar. It's a bar with a dog park. Now, people are going to find a place to walk their dogs. They don't need a subsidy for that. People don't need a subsidy to drink beer. We just gave one to K-Bar. But in St. Louis, you just hire a lawyer, and the lawyer will get you your tax credits, and you don't do a project without him. And it's terrible. I have a problem talking about all these in one umbrella, too, because state tax credits is one thing, which clearly they do need. But when you talk about ta property tax abatements, and I don't care whether it's, and I, unlike you, I actually like dogs, but um, the, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the, um, the idea, this is taking it right out of the public schools. When you do okay. a property tax abatement, everybody it complains is. about the public schools and then says, oh, we love it. Now, sometimes, the state, the, sometimes Ray, they the have state, said it. The state so, tax right, credits right. come out of the nurses right. at the veterans' home. I, I agree completely. But I'm just trying to say, in the case of property tax abatements, I agree that the city, and I'm sure the school district agrees, that the city gives away too many of them. Okay, sometimes now, on these projects, money. they we, pay something in. Because of limited school. time. we got, we got to move yeah, forward. Okay. However, Sarah... Hyperloop is uh, oh. the pneumatic device that's going to carry cargo and passengers from St. Louis to Kansas City in 30 short minutes. Now, uh, an interview with uh, Mr. Smith of Hyperloop and Michael Calhoun of KMOX indicated that just to test it out, it's going to cost $300 million. Are you going to write the first check in the public-private partnership? I am absolutely not. And I want to say, have we learned nothing? We're talking about the loop trolley. What is the big problem with the loop trolley? It goes to these places that don't need to be connected. No one wants to ride it. If it wasn't on this fixed track, we'd tear up the route and, and use the money for that. So we're about to build a pneumatic tube that goes to Kansas City. Who wants to go to Kansas City? I, have a sol my, I think the only logical solution is, is you take the trolleys, you retrofit them so they can travel at a thousand miles an hour, <laughs> and we shoot those bad boys over to Kansas City. Well, no, a, of course I'm not for as, spending that money. As, 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 a for this? as a recently more greater Kansas City Chiefs fan, <laughs> uh, which, yeah, really, <laughs> I'm still a I'm still a Chiefs fan. No, but I like the Chiefs. But and we wish them well in the Super Bowl. But but the thing is, I. Yeah, I mean it's it's so ridiculous, and I mean how many how many was it nurses at the veterans' home salaries are we going to yeah. take to do this? I mean it's so ridiculous even talking. Yeah, okay, about, now the state should not be coming off three hundred million dollars. Don't get me wrong, but listen to you all. We'd still be staring at the moon, thinking about God <laughs> golly, what is life like? You know, wait. Who needs to be in Kansas City <laughs> in a half hour? Well, wait, Nobody. Wait, what Nobody. I'm saying is, it would ball, create a new technology that if this were the birthplace of it, it could serve St. Louis very, very well. That's the, that is why it is interesting to me. Yes, I would ride it. Yes, I would, I would volunteer to be one of the right. first people on it because it, it really could help our region if, but I'm not saying. There's some viewers who like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? Uh, by the way, uh, final topic tonight. Uh, <laughs> Sudbury School is a school without rules, without classes, without teachers. Yeah and uh, no tests. It's located in University City, Sarah, and uh, it, was it Blythe Bernhard of the, yes. of the Post-Dispatch who profiled this week? I thought it was really interesting. It's a school where the kids sit around in hammocks and think great thoughts while on their iPhones. Sarah, what do you think? 
Well, I mean, I love this in theory because I feel like so much of education, it's teaching to the test, it's rote, it has no room for creativity. And letting kids follow their own star to the thing that genuinely interests them, I think we need more of that in education. I would feel a lot better if they weren't allowed to have their phones in there and just scroll through those all day. I, I just bad. wonder why I was born too early because I had such a tough time with teachers and classes and tests. I would have really, I think, thrived at this school. <laughs> I think I, I'd have thrived. Yeah, well, I would until you went to a place and they said, like, you're a dummy. Right? Girl, how fancy your school was. Yeah. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. But my self-esteem uh, would be way high, Oh, it would be very high. So, yeah. I got a 99 on self-esteem. I flunk bad. <laughs> I am on Sarah's side. Why, 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 why are you going to lose it? No, I mean, I think generally. I, I think it makes an interesting statement in the sense that it is, it is sort of the polar extreme of our fealty to test scores and teaching to the test and all the kind of quantifying everything. I think probably the best part would be somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. <laughs> but but I, I, I don't, I, I like in spirit the fact that they are at least talking about dealing with children as human beings as opposed to oh, numbers. School. I think that's right. School school. Schools right. treat yeah, kids we, like I didn't human say beings. I didn't say they we, don't. We that's not what I'm saying. I'm if saying they're, Kirkwood, they're, you go they're take airing in that direction yeah. is my point. Uh, and I, well, I think they I mean, are even, airing. Even kindergartners have homework right. these days. And there's there's a lot, nothing wrong with that. Don't misunderstand. What? The teachers, I mean, the people that run the schools care about the kids as teachers. That's all. But I'm saying we as a society tend to look at quantifying things too much. Kids are sitting around accomplishing nothing. What do they think they are? Downey Brook panelists? <laughs> hey, let's go to the old mailbag and see what people had to say about last week's program. I'm a veteran in my 60s with ink. What really astonishes me about tattoos today is that the one I have cost $25 in 1974, easily costs 10 times as much today. That from Rich Egenreiter of St. Louis, Missouri. We also heard from Larry Snope at Cavalton. Ray said that Kim Gardner ran for office on disrupting and changing the system. So, St. Louis is going to follow the San Francisco model of law enforcement. How's that working for them? You can write us, care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Don't forget those emails, letters at KETC.org, and those tweets, hashtag DonnybrookSTL. You can also follow us on your favorite uh, channel of uh, Spotify, Google Play, TuneIn, and Apple. Please follow our podcast. They cost you nothing. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition. Thanks to Sarah and Joe for joining us as well. We hope you enjoy the weekend. Keep it on the Nine Network and stay warm. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network.